Thank you so much, Mark, for your introduction. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jing Bo Wang. Uh, the co-author in my talk is my supervisor, Dr. Ben Evans. He's Associate Director of NCI. Today, I'm going to share with you some of the recent data training stories that NCI has been offering to our user. NCI has been managing more than 10 petabyte research data, and those data are tuned for uh, computational intensive method and data analysis. Some of the data are also served through our data services. Our data collection include satellite images, climate model, weather simulation, observation, astronomy, geophysics, and genomics data, and bioinformatics as well, and so on. We also developed an in-house high-performance data services called Chiski. This allows users to extract information very quickly from online using something like National Map and Terria. And currently we are serving most of Earth observation data, but we hope to release some climate model as well. With the data and tools available, the traditional way to interact with HPC is you submit a job through the command line and then waiting for the job queuing system to finish uh, and return the result. But nowadays, within the data science, people are more familiar with Python, R, and Julia Wood, and how do they interact with their workflow with HPC? And the solution is called Pangeo. So we developed this Pangeo open source ecosystem, which empower users to be able to interactively working with HPC resources from web uh, browser uh, from their local computer. On the left hand side is a tutorial to guide users through how to um, make this research environment step by step. So um, the data training that we offer is uh, pretty NCI specific within our context. So we need to let user know we have a whole bunch of data set and we have data services and we recently built a high performance data analysis platform. To give you an idea of what user can do, I pick up four different animation from my example pool. The first one on the left hand side is the cyclone Debbie in 2017. You can see the center of the cyclone moving very quickly towards inland. And this is the data from uh, Hemorari 8, which is a satellite meteorology observation data. The middle one is a global temperature anomaly over the past 165 years. This uh, animation showing you the global warming in the end, you can see uh, the circle expanding very quickly over the last 30 years, which reflect the um, very quick, rapid global warming in recent time. On the right hand side is the bushfire uh, burn that we captured from Sentinel, which is a satellite image sensor. We serve this data through uh, our GISKI. Sorry. The top one is a correlation of the rainfall between the model data and observation. So the correlation basically tell you how good the model is to predict the real data. We teach people how to search our data collection through the NCI data catalog and how to access data, how to extract the data programmatically for their own research. And we also teach people how the data services works and how they plug the data services URL link into an independent application such as uh, QGIS, ArcGIS, and Panoply, etc. Those training are introductory level training. It doesn't require any prior knowledge for user to be able to uh, get on. And we really wanted to promote this because the data service through data services is free, open to everyone. And we want to, um, as many people as possible to use our data services for free. They don't have to be even a user of NCI. The next level of training courses would be when user work with large data sets, they would have a question like, how do you manage a lot of file input and output and how to optimize the parallel IO, how to work large than memory data and how to improve the job efficiency and how to run um, parallel job on cluster efficiently and optimize their program. That's the advanced level of topic that we teach our user. This year, our focus has been developing training materials in presentation style, wiki space and web pages. Jupyter notebooks are another focus and we develop a user guide 
this is because uh, we launched the new machine last year and we wanted to build a new cloud this year as well. Uh, for example, we just released the new um, uh, virtual desktop infrastructure last this Monday. So it means that we have to make sure our documentation user guide up to date uh, to be in the same time when we release the new infrastructure and services. When I designed this training course curriculum, I found a few useful channels. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention here is the survey that we did with our user. Apart from that, uh, the direct interaction with our stakeholder is the best way to, and the first hand information that we got. I also found the help desk ticket is very useful information resource. I use the text mining to find out the most frequently asked questions. Also from the question that user asked, I would be able to figure out the technical caveat or knowledge gap that we could address in our training session. Another driver for the training material uh, development is that we keep releasing new data sets and releasing the new functionality of data services, and we need to let user know those new things. Being an observer uh, to the existing national and internationally workshops, I was motivated a lot uh, by their ideas and styles. One of the uh, community, which is Software Capital, I found uh, it's such a supportive community and I've got a lot of useful information from there. Just to share with you, uh, what is our community space look like on the right hand side? This is a snapshot for a uh, climate uh, model intercomparison community, in short, CMIP. And we post information about data upset, data, uh, data upload, and data download, and also errata, the, which is the error of the data that we sometimes bring offline and republish the new one. So user can come here and uh, check what is the latest information. On the left-hand side is a web page where we offer data webinar series that um, run on a bi-weekly basis. We use this as a channel to communicate user by start building the introductory level of knowledge of um, something like overview of data collection, how do you log on the virtual desktop infrastructure, how do you build the Python environment, and what is a GISKI and how do you use GISKI for your research. You can see on the right hand side the number of register has been increasing along the time. And um, I got a feedback from the attendees that uh, this is the economical way that they don't have to make a big commitment on both time and the money, and they can keep uh, their own pace slowly pick up those concepts by attending the webinars. In the next few slides, I'm going to share with you a few on-site events which happened recently. Uh, the first one is the half-day training that we offered uh, on side-by-side -side with the AMOS training, uh, AMOS conference. AMOS represents Australian Meteorology and Oceanography Society. And this is one of the major societies we have been serving for. A lot of users will go to this conference, so we will go there too. And we offer the same, um, we offer the training to the user to provide the latest information of the data and tools and platform to keep them updated. Uh, the next event that we did last year is a global hackathon event. Um, this hackathon event uh, called for uh, global attendees, uh, those students and researchers, to address uh, challenges, which is in indigenous community. Those challenges can be addressed using the open Earth observation data. So this event is a partial event um, within that geo week in 2019. The team were formed across Alaska, Germany, of course, Australia as well. And they were given 36 hours maximum to address some of the challenges. I was amazed that by the end of the day, everyone uh, lack of sleep, black eyes, but they are so excited with what they've done uh, within only just 36 hours. And this is really one of the most stimulating events I've ever hosted and uh, pre um, attended as well. The other major events last year we did is Australasia Research Supercomputing Users Forum, which is um, hosted by NCI in collaboration with POSI and NESI. And the idea of uh, this symposium is to bring all the um, HPC user, HPD user in the same room so that they can share the technical 
bits and making connections and uh, showcasing their great work using HPC. Of course, this is another great opportunity to offer training. So we offer training in two track the same day. In the morning, we offer uh, introductory course to high performance computing and high performance data analysis. In the afternoon, it's more advanced topic. Because of the nature of this user forum, um, there are more advanced user than the introductory course level uh, register. The last one is the beginning of this year, just before COVID happened. And this is the fourth Australian Climate and Water Summer Institute. This summer school run every year around this time was led by Professor Albert Van Dijk from Furnace School at ANU. I'm always uh, glad to see so many young research students and earlier career researchers from our stakeholder like Bureau, Meteorology, CSIRO, and uh, INU and other universities and uh, Murray Darling Basin authorities as well. And it's a great opportunity for NCI to promote our data collection, our environmental um, data services, and uh, introducing HPC, those students and early career researcher can potentially be our user along their research path. To recap what we uh, have achieved through the training is that um, we found establishing uh, and enhanced collaboration with our data expertise through training is extremely useful. Help Desk Tickets is an informative source for me to build uh, training material. A webinar is a popular option, uh, which basically save money and time for people. And be mindful this is even before COVID-19 and perhaps now it became, will become even more demanding and popular as an option. Online tutorial is a focus this year, and we designed a lot of uh, tutorials uh, for users to learn at their own pace. So please stay tuned um, for the broadcast of the new material that we will release by the end of this year. Whenever I work out a training session, I was motivated to do more uh, because training is not just uh, we deliver things to people. We also get feedback from people and we know what do we teach for the next round of training. So really it motivated the new topics. Of course, there are challenges. It's hard to satisfy everyone's need and meet everybody's uh, expectation, especially uh, our user has come across a different domain. But one of the good thing is uh, cross disciplinary here is possible because when one domain see what other people uh, in other domain was doing, they can pick up um, from each other. The other challenge I found is um, keeping material updated. For example, in my data analysis example, I'm using X-ray and Dusk, which are very uh, being actively developed libraries until now. So every couple of months, I have to come back and make sure the material is up to date and make sure that uh, the old function is replaced with the newer one. Um, that is time consuming and uh, overhead. Uh, the more material I have, the more overhead I have. And the last point I put here as a challenge, but um, which is um, I found it's hard to promote training events, but from the earlier discussion today, I think I already got some good idea and I really feel like this is the right home for trainers to share experience and learn from each other. And uh, lastly, I'm going to wrap up my presentation by uh, sharing a little bit my own personal feeling about training. As a learner, I found um, if I know what to do, it sounds pretty easy. But if I don't, um, it stopped me to learning things because I thought it must be very hard. But in fact, there is always a technical solution there. Um, so through the training, the trust and bond that we established between the trainer and attendees is that they know that even though they can't resolve the problem for the future, but they know there are resources and willingness in the community there to help. I think that's part of the goal of a training. And uh, that's also kind of a rewarding part when I deliver training with my passion and uh, love. So I'm going to just stop here and thank you for your attention. Happy to take any questions.